So let's look at the opening statement from the book. We went through the four lines of attack. One, knowing the Word of God. Number two, praying. Three, righteousness and holiness. And fourthly, evangelism. So this is my father's discipleship manual that he wrote in Vietnam. He says, what is needed in our time? Today we need Christian men who are willing to give their all to advance the kingdom of God. That's what everything's about, is the kingdom of God. Secondly, we need men and we need women. And we need young people as well. But I think we need a new Christian men's movement. And we need to stand up for God, for country, for humanity against these evil and poisonous ideas coming from the world, talk, uh, attacking manhood. And there are many virtues of being a man. And yet, they're talking about toxic masculinity. We need, to, we need to push back against this for the sake of mankind, for the sake of men, for the sake of our families and our homes. And we need men of courage to do this. I got this book in the back room called The Church of Cowards by uh, Matt Walsh. And we need strong men of courage and integrity to speak up, define what's right, what's wrong, and say, thus saith the Lord. God's used many women in the past. And uh, you know, when I look at the book of Judges, I talked to some you know, men about this. That's why. So what about Deborah? Well, it just shows how bad things were, you know, that, that God had to use a woman. <laughs> You know, it's like, but God did use a woman. God called Deborah, and it wasn't a woman. I'm mean, sorry, it wasn't Barak. Barak was a man of God, too. He's this great general. But he's not the one that defeated the enemy. It was a woman, and not even a, an Israelite woman. An Arabian woman belonged to the Kenite uh, tribe called Jael. So, I mean, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, God has used women in mighty ways. It's just the way it is. Uh, be that as it may, we still need strong, courageous men. So I was reading this. It's like, well, should I update, uh, update what Dad said? No. No, I'm not going to change the language. They're doing that now. They're rewriting, uh, uh, was it Dolls, Works, it's children, novels. Now Ian Fleming, you know, it's like, oh, this, this, this uh, antiquated language. I want to be faithful to my, my father's vision as much as possible. And, uh, and some things he's, he's right. Christ calls men who are willing to be militant disciples. So, so I talk with one of my brothers. It's like, well, maybe dad was a little bit too strict and he should have been open minded. And Well, he, I think he was in his own ways. Uh, it's like, you know, go big or go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's just like, let's just. Dad was 100% sold out for God's kingdom. And uh, I think that's the way we need to be if we're going to see, uh, if we want to have a productive life, if we want to see real change, let's go all the way. If the church is the army of Christ, then we need to have some units of shock troops who are willing to pull down Satan's stronghold with the weapons, the weapons of spiritual warfare. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4. You know, social issues are, are very, very important. And... Uh, what do we, as conservatives, you know, we believe in traditional, wholesome values. And I remember these, these people call, you know, the Sean Handy show all the time. Oh, let's just talk about fiscal conservatives. We don't need social conservatives. Let's not talk about these issues. But the left, they are not afraid to take up controversial social issues and, and commit to the, the farest, leftist, most extreme and loony uh, position, and they'll push it all the way, like uh, mutilating children's genitals. They're, they're with that. The Democrat Party is with that 100%. And uh, God bless my, Matt Walsh for standing up to protect our children. But there's no levels of depravity the left people, that the people on the left won't push. So why can't we stand as adamantly for wholesome, decent, biblical, and Christian values. And then we're ashamed. <laughs> you know? 
Matt Walsh, you know, the book, A Church of Cowards. We won't even say it's wrong to, to take off body parts off, of, you know, a child. Oh, I want to take a body part off. Okay, let's have an elective surgery and start removing body parts off a 12-year-old. And, uh, you know, and he had this great comment. He says, what, what they stand for is so wicked, evil, and heinous, they won't even clearly say it. Because, it's, you know, just to say that, gender-affirming care, things like that. You use all these code words for something that's wicked and heinous. And it's like, well, why are we so afraid? And why do we listen to, to, to bad counsel? Don't focus on protecting the home. And look what's going on. Drug abuse, uh, high suicide rates, deaths from suicide. That's because we have not fought to protect the home against, against the forces of evil. And we need to have the courage to call and say, what it is. It's not mince words. It's not be mealy mouth. It's just say what is right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And that doesn't mean we're perfect. We're human beings. We make mistakes. I know I sure have. But we have a standard. And that's the standard that we have to aspire to. And that's the this, this, this standard that we speak forth to help people. In his day, Charles Spurgeon desired for such Christian warriors when he as for twelve men who fear nothing but God, and I'll shake London. Sorry, twelve men who fear nothing but God, and I'll shake London from one end to the other. I was listening to uh, Greg Laurie, and he's <laughs> Calvary Chapel are pushing too many Calvinist people. But I, I have to acknowledge it that Charles Spurgeon is a mighty man of God, even though if I don't, I don't agree with his Calvinist perspective. And I actually went to the tab uh, the Metropolitan Tabernacle when I was studying at, at Oxford in, in England, and. Uh, uh, the church isn't as large as it was in Spurgeon's day, and it's mostly made up of immigrants now. It's probably 60% immigrant um, because England is, is falling away from God. But they can be revived again. It's because we don't have militant faith. We need men who are actively engaged with local congregation, but are, who are willing to go beyond these minimal obligations. Not, not everybody can go into full-time ministry. I understand that. But you can do what you can. But we need people who are going to go all the way. We need men who hold fast to the basic historical doctrines of the church on one hand while seeking new ways to exalt Christ and the others. We need to have, we need to have innovative ways to, to, to uh, proclaim the gospel. Uh, but, you know, what I want to do as I, as I preach the word of God is we need to have good, sound doctrine. Because there's a lot of heretics and heresies out there or just fringe doctrines that, you know, maybe that's right. Like the whole thing with Calvin is... To me, it's like, well, you know, I don't agree with Calvinism, but if, even if Calvinism was, was true to me, that's not the gospel. Of course, I'm hyper-Calvinist. Yes, it is the gospel. This is the gospel. It's like, no, it's not. It's not the gospel. If you can dispute about it, then it's not the gospel. The gospel is very, very clear uh, in the scriptures. As he says here, we need men and women who hold fast to the basic historical doctrine of the church on one hand, but seek new innovative ways to exalt Christ on the other. We need to, my father's an artist, I'm artistic too, I'm an artist, and we need to have creative ways, new ways, innovative ways, and maybe ways that make people feel, you know, uncomfortable, think outside the box, or beyond the barriers to get the, the Word of God out there, like uh, Christian filmmaking, uh, we need to start working on high, good quality Christian filmmaking. At the same time, <laughs> I already alluded to this, these men must be willing to avoid profitless and petty disputes which divide the body of Christ. Like the Calvinist and Armenian controversy, it's, that's that's part of the problem with hyper Calvinists is they get you know, they start arguing these finer points of doctrine, and uh, they lose sight of our need to advance the kingdom of God. We start fighting among ourselves, and it's not it's not good. That's another issue I have with uh, Calvinism. At the same time, we must be willing to avoid profitless and pay disputes which divide the body of Christ. Like Paul, we must be willing to know nothing but Christ and Him crucified. Then we also have the fact Arminius did acknowledge, if you look at the Institutes of the Christian Religions, even though he disagreed on certain points of soterology, he says most of the Institute of the Christian uh, Religion by, by Calvin uh, is theologically sound. So I'm going to be fair. And we have brothers in Christ on both sides of the issue. Just, we can't be bogged down with these th theological controversies. The mission. The mission for every Christian soldier, that's, that's important. It's like, you know, when you're in the military, it's like, what is the mission? And, you know, these, these companies, they do mission statements. But with the military, it's quite different. 
It's an objective. You know, why are we fighting? What are we trying to accomplish? What is the mission we're on? It must be to achieve a military goal. It must be clearly defined. And what is it? To exalt Christ, the Messiah, before all men, at all times, by all means. Each Christian must be willing to be a soul winner and equally important, a spiritual leader to those he wins. And not only the mission of the Christian soldiers, of the Christian soldier to bring men to a decision, or people to a decision, they must be brought to spiritual matur maturity in Christ Jesus by the nurture and admonition, the admonition of the Word of God and by spiritual exercise. That's very important. Each Christian should be made to become a vigorous witness for the Christ who purchased him by his blood. And so that's the introduction to this book, and we're going to go through it. I think this is very important. If the Lord is bringing about revival, and uh, Dr. Michael Brown says, look, you know, God's used Ar Armenians and Calvinists to bring about revival, and we need to be open and ready and prepared for the move of God to be equipped to advance the kingdom in a time of great spiritual awakening and revival. And another thing that we have to have, which isn't touched on right here, but we also have to have a global focus. Remember the Great Commission is going to all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. All right. Baron and I want to invite you to attend our next study, continuing the series on uh, the Handbook for Christian Soldiers, our Manual for Discipleship and Soul Winning. All right, buddy?